Hi there, welcome to my second video. I'm Steve Perryman and I'd like to go through with you the first reading. As you go through the reading, please think about the content and whether it resonates with your own knowledge and understanding of financial management and public sector reform in Indonesia. Dr O'Neill's module on public administration gave you a wide view of public sector reform over the last 30 to 40 years around the world. At the heart of these reforms was the transformation from the traditional system of public administration to public management, where budgetary and financial reforms were at the heart of these agendas. These were mostly very effective reforms. There were other reforms about the restructure of the public sector. However, many jurisdictions did not follow the more radical version of public sector change. For example, the United Kingdom, New Zealand and the Australian state of Victoria, from where I'm from, were at the forefront of these radical reforms. Other OECD, Southeast Asian and European countries did not go in for radical privatisation that was seen in these countries of New Zealand, uh, Australia and also the UK. However, what was common in most OECD countries was the attempt to reform budgets and to improve financial management in the public sector. The article that I've given you from Professor Owen Hughes, Chapter 14, gives you, you a good brief overview. Now let me go through some of the content with you to start you off. So what are the functions of budgets? Well, first they are a statement of economic policy of the government. These include the values, priorities that the government has chosen. It is also the end process of bargaining between actors. These are primarily between agencies and coordinating departments of the government. These are the central government departments that are run at the core of government. They include the Prime Minister's Department in my own country or the President's Department in your own, the Treasury, the Treasurer and Finance Departments. So in the budgetary process there is an engagement between the Centre and the Departments or Ministries to determine the budgets of each Ministry. The end of this bargaining process is a set of agreements between agencies and the government about where money is to be allocated, what activities will be carried out and the conditions and expectations about delivery. If they are met, then the policy has been delivered. If not, then the program might be dropped next year or the managers forced to take the blame. We'll talk more about this in class. An important role of the budget is to be the centrepiece of government financial management. It includes an estimate of expenditures, the revenues coming into government treasury and the expenditures over the next 12 months. In some jurisdictions, there are a set of extended or projected expenditures over a set period of time. For example, there might be three year rolling estimates as there are in Australia. These are amended each year. They show what expenditures are projected or expected so that governments are not surprised about the near future. They also help governments plan for the future and give some degree of certainty to departments about ongoing programs and projects. The budget usually excludes businesses, government businesses or public corporations that have their own separate sets of accounting documents. It also excludes public-private partnerships, again because they have their own set of financial statements and they're not usually included in the budget sector. So what are the economic functions of a budget? Essentially, there are a set of decisions that focus on the health of the economy and also the type of economy and society that the politicians have for a country. These decisions are set out in a practical form and give the values of the, that the government supports in a series of policies and programs and presents a narrative or a story about the government. 
how it views its role in society. This includes how large the public sector should be and what it should and should not do for citizens. This narrative is political. It is the outcome of a lot of bargaining inside and outside government and the government party. It is also very contested. Notably inside the government, there'll be different views as there will be in the legislature and outside government. However, when the budget is presented, these views converge in a series of compromises and trade-offs between various stakeholders. To the outside world, the budget is a coherent set of documents that reveal the values, priorities and strategies of the government. Let's now look at the economic functions of the budget. A key question for de the decision makers is how the government influences the entire economy. We may dissect it by using three functions, allocation, distribution and stabilisation first, with allocation. This indicates which activities will be publicly funded or determined and which privately. Public expenditure feeds into private demand and private responses. Think of investment in infrastructure such as roads or rail. Distribution is about governments typically trying to redistribute wealth, notably to provide a floor or a safety net for the less well off, but also to provide maybe subsidies for certain activities or areas, for example, farmers or innovation. Third, there is stabilisation. This is about price stability, a stable currency and a stable balance of payment that feeds into a stable society and economy. Governments will pursue multiple themes in their budgets. Woven together, they tell the story and the budget sets the economic narrative for the government. The budget also shows us how it will deal with scarcity. Scarcity, scarcity is an important theme in budgeting and financial management. This is one that will be familiar to you as it is to us in Australia. Those of you who have studied economics know that a foundation principle in economics is that resources are always scarce. That is, there is never enough to do everything we want to do. Now please read the text reading that has been translated into Bahasa Indonesia and also reflect on Dr O'Neill's module 2 about public sector reforms. Think about where the reforms sit within the agendas of the public sector reform and also think about how your own government views financial management reform and what you are asked to do in your own work and whether it fits into the financial reform agendas of the Indonesian government. Thank you for watching.